It's getting exciting down at Starbase with progress being made on the second launch tower. Plus, we are gearing up for IFT3, which could be coming pretty soon. Booster 10 is back on the orbital launch mount for the next phase of its pre-flight testing campaign. Here's some video from Lab Padre showing Booster 10 being held by the chopsticks, lifted and nestling once more where she once sat before inside the orbital launch mount. And a tale of two towers down at Starbase continues with some major progress being made. Elon recently announced in an all hands on talk with SpaceX that yes, they're going to build a second tower down at Starbase. And then we're also gonna build a second tower. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna, this is this is we're going to really be launching a lot and up and we're going to be upgrading one tower while we launch from another tower. So two towers is important. This will ramp up their cadence, no doubt. And we also saw SpaceX share that they have multiple ships ready for testing. So I think 2024 we're we're going to see a lot of Starship testing. So if you haven't been able to make it to a launch. Well, you'll probably get your chance this year. So the progress is not only tied to Texas, we are also getting components from Florida. These images are circling around showing these four Starship Tower segments departing from Cape Canaveral and making their way to Starbase, Texas for the construction of a second launch tower. And look at this incredible video from Jerry Pike. Here, four Starship Tower segments, which are bound for Texas, are seen squeezing through the drawbridge into Port Canaveral. So as always, it's a busy scene down at Starbase and even the waters from the Space Coast to South Texas have Starship components paving a path to more Starship activity for 2024. And of course, we are awaiting the first flight of 2024. It'll be Starship's third test flight and we're thinking it may be sometime in February or March. Now recently an ex post from Christian Davenport shared, the FAA might issue a Starship launch license mid to late February. This is a timeline that SpaceX officials like Kathy Leaders have mentioned multiple times, and it comes as SpaceX is making several changes to its launch pad site in Texas. But I asked many of you on my X account, hey, when do you think the next launch will be? And you guys seem to be split between February and March. So maybe we'll compromise and have it fall on this leap year, February 29th. Boy, that would be pretty lucky. And also here's a bonus throwback. We're going to flight two that was in November of 2023. But this time we have new footage from NASA. However, you'll notice it's excluding a very important part of IFT2. NASA has released this footage of the second flight of Starship, including that taken from the WB57 tracking plane. However, you'll notice it does not include those hot staging views. There are multiple clips edited into order, but again, we don't see that hot staging, which we have seen video of that shortly after the second launch. So I wanna know from you in the comments, why do you think that they are excluding that specific part of the flight? Well, and you may be wondering, how did I get this 3D printed Starship tower? Well, I actually assembled it myself. And if you're interested in assembling one, I will leave the link in the comments as well as the video description. So if you wanna order one of these to 3D print it yourself, or maybe you want to assemble it yourself, if you do that, it will support my channel and I thank you for that. So of course, we are getting so excited for the third test flight of Starship. This time, Elon really thinks that they're gonna actually make it to orbit. They're gonna have a successful flight. And hey, maybe third time is a charm, but leave a comment with your prediction for what you think will happen on the third test flight of Starship. So I do intend to be at IFT3. I'm hoping to test my Starlink down at Starbase where it's notoriously bad for service. I specifically got the RV version, which is good for roaming so that I could actually see how it performs. So I'm really looking forward to that test. And of course, just looking forward to seeing another Starship launch. To it again. A little bit of a tilt, but oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But it is definitely going. Oh, it looks so far, the exhaust plume looks much better than the first IFT. 
However, I will be in Orlando February 22nd through the 25th, and that is because I am going on the zero G flight. So hopefully it doesn't fall within those dates because yes, of course I have to go with the zero G flight. This is a contest that I won from Moondow. So thank you to the Moondow community for voting me in. I can't believe that we're less than a month away. You know, number one, you said that people didn't really get sick on your flight. That's what I'm most afraid of. How did you feel? Well, I I was totally. Uh, first of all, I took you know Dramamine or whatever the the thing is, right? That's the motion sickness thing, and I went in with just a little bit of food, and I just sort of, you know, put my mind state in like, okay, let's keep keep a level head here. Let's like not avoid like turning your head too quickly when it's doing rotations and stuff because you gotta understand the whole plane is moving around you. But um. Yeah, they think that laying down works, um, and frankly, I that's what most people did, and I chose to sit up for most of mine. After the first one, it's like, I can do this, yeah, um, and that worked fine for me. But yeah, I mean, like, if you feel anything, the first thing to do is sort of slow down and stop, um, you know, stop rotating your head. I'm really excited to fly in zero G and experience weightlessness and see what it's like to feel like an astronaut, if not briefly. Of course, these parabolas are about, you know, 20 to 25 second passes of feeling weightless. Um, and there are about 15 to 20 parabolas in the flight. So very much looking forward to that. I hope I don't get sick, but if Starship, uh, if the launch falls anytime before or after that, I definitely will be there. And it's always a fun time down at Starbase. So if you haven't been able to see a launch, of course, I highly encourage it. In fact, I would recommend going to Starbase over Kennedy Space Center um, over Orlando because I don't know, there's just something so magical about Starbase. You get so close and it's not like at KSC where you have to pay extra money for a VIP tour. You literally drive down the road to the beach and you're seeing all of this activity right from the side of the road completely for free, guys. So um, we know that that may change in the future. There may be more um, you know, restricted access but it's definitely worth going and I really can't wait to be back there. Some of you guys actually think I live there, which is kind of funny to me. I live in Austin, which is about five and a half hours uh, north of Starbase, but it's not too bad for a day drive. So looking forward to that. I know that we're all looking forward to the third launch of Starship and 2024, there's just no doubt it's gonna be a huge year for commercial space. Oh, and one more thing before I forget, Polaris has an update. They are now targeting no earlier than summer 2024 for the launch of Polaris Dawn. This is the first of the Polaris program's three human space flights. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so crazy. And Jared shared this saying he's feeling pretty good about the latest timeline. So these missions are going to be incredible. They are going to be one of a kind. The crew is actively training at Hawthorne to prepare for the mission's goals, including the first ever commercial spacewalk, and they'll be testing Starlink internet aboard Dragon. So unfortunately, this is another delay, but this additional time will provide necessary developmental time to ensure both the completion of the mission goals and a safe launch and return of Dragon and the crew. So I am beyond excited for these missions to actually take place. And I just wanted to let you know that the timeline has shifted. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's completely free to subscribe. And I feel like we're getting pretty close to 100,000 subscribers. So with your help, we can get there and we can keep growing this channel, Ellie in Space, so we can do bigger and better things. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.